All right, so let's take a look at some custom emitters we can create with Axiom. We already looked at how to source in your custom VDBs. Very simple example here. Uh, this one would be a bit more complex. Still very simple. And I feel like we need to put a bit more temperature just so it's rising up a bit faster. There we go. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating a grid, scattering points, creating an attribute noise float, and I'm adding some noise to the temperature field. We can view the temperature field here. It looks like this. This is the noise. And then I'm doing the same thing with density. Uh, we are then using a volume rasterize attribute, which will rasterize the temperature and density for us. So this is how the temperature field looks like. And in this case, we only have, let me double check Get to the beginning. We only have positive values, but we can also go in negative. So we're going to have some negative and some positive values here. Let's see. All right. Uh, which is also valid, like I showed you in the previous example. You can have negative temperatures in your emission fields, just like so. And that will give you some pretty cool effects. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what you would use this for, but maybe for a dust explosion where you would have a variance in temperature like this and some dust would be more hot and it would be kicked up and some dust would be a bit more cold because it was closer to the ground and it would be falling down faster. So there's an idea. But if you put this to zero, we are only gonna have positive temperatures. Like so. Maybe a bit too much now. It's always a good idea to noise up your emitters. So that's one of the best ways of doing it and then once you have those values uh, you rasterize them and you plug them into the axiom solver now we already talked about all of this i'm not doing anything special here so i will continue to the next example which is using the pyro burst source there's a lot of cool things we can do with the pyro burst source it's very versatile uh, and I literally created the base pyro source. There's nothing special about it. I think I only created one more um, source. I think divergence is not created by default. So we have burn, divergence, temperature, and density. Everything else is quite basic. And we rasterize all of the volumes. So here I wanted to show you the Axiom naming conventions. Uh, I have them here as well. Essentially, what the only thing we do need to rename, well, that's not true. We don't need to rename anything. So if I remove all the renames and I'll cache the emitter, just so that's fast. All right, so these are the fields that we have. So Axiom will actually just work. That's what you're going to get. Um, Everything will work. Axiom will recognize anything that's coming from the existing Pyro tools, which is very awesome and convenient. But if you wanna, if you wanna be in the realm, <clears throat> in the correct naming uh, space, using the correct naming conventions, then this is what you do. So you have your burn, and Axiom is not using a burn field, but it is using a fuel field. So you would rename your burn. To fuel we have divergence axiom like i said before is not using divergence but it's using pressure so we would rename that and here we have our velocity we would rename that to vel because that's uh, what axiom prefers but like you saw before everything is gonna work like it did so we're gonna get the same explosion what I'm doing on the solver side here, I'm doing a few things. I am animating the turbulence. It's completely valid to animate your 
force us in the beginning. Oops, animation. So I'm animating it from quite a high value of 100. So you get that kick in the beginning. Another thing we can do is animate the time scale. So we can go from three, let's disable the simulation, to one. Let's go back, enable it. And now the time step is animated. Actually, it's not true. It's not animated. One, three. Now it's going to be animated. So you saw we got a bit more kick in the beginning from that. It's pretty cool. Let's do a preview. Now, I feel like the explosion could be a bit more explosive, <laughs> which means that we need to add combustion. So I will do a separate video just on combustion, but let's take a look at combustion here as well. So here we were sourcing fuel. Currently, fuel is not doing anything until we activate combustion. In order for fuel to work, we need temperature. So when temperature and fuel combine, that's when we're going to have ignition or combustion. Now, a cool thing about the pyro source is that you can noise up your fields. So you can create some more interesting shapes when it comes to your fields, which means that this part, now that we don't have temperature here will not ignite, but this part will, and then that ignition will transfer to the other areas of the explosion. So that's something to keep in mind as well. You can also change the start frame. You can see if you do it like this, then your explosion will, then your temperature will come in a few with a few frames of a delay. Let's keep it to the basic for now. I will show you how to use this in the later episode. So we have this and we are sourcing uh, fuel and we have temperature. If we enable combustion, once this is, like I said, when fuel meets temperature, these are the fields that are gonna be created and let's create uh, some pressure as well. So you can see the temperature is rising up more because we have more temperature being created in the beginning. We can expand this and add even more temperature. So you can see the shape is a bit different. Let's go crazy, go 10. And now we're gonna have even more temperature rising up. And that's something that would naturally, naturally occur in an explosion. Uh, you have this temperature threshold. So if you put this to 10, uh, this will not, well, I think our temperature is quite high. So if we put this to a higher value, our temperature will not, our, our combustion will not happen because this is the temperature, the temperature at which the fuel will ignite using this as a threshold. You can use the other fields here, like we discussed before, to add even more control. Let's put this back to zero because we want everything to ignite. And if you want even more explosive behavior, we have this burn field. So how much of the fuel will burn each substep, which means that if we put a high number here, everything will burn immediately. And you will get a more explosive behavior because everything will happen here at the base. All of this emission will occur immediately because everything will be burned. You can add some inefficiency, which means that, sure, almost everything will be burned, but we can say we'll add a 25% of inefficiency. So we will still have a bit more fuel to burn. Fuel is also advected with the whole simulation, so that's that. And if you want even more explosive behavior, you put this to frame step, which means that it's going to burn even faster. So you can see now we create a, a ball of fire essentially immediately. 
So how can we check the values? Because this is using temperature. Put down a pyro bake. Input scatter. And let's output temperature. And let's see how that looks. Let's also change a few values. I will put this to a darker hue just so we can see it a bit better. On the scatter, put this to 48 and a blur, put this to something like this. And let's compute the range. What I usually do is I put this to, I clamp the lower values just a bit, just so the temperature at the bottom gets away. So we only have temperature that's happening at the top where everything is super hot. All right, so we have that. We would need, we are maybe adding maybe a too much, bit too much temperature. Uh, maybe we would want to animate this. Um, let's see, turbulence as well. They put it to five here and go to 64, maybe a bit more disturbances now the, now you're just looking how i would go about and play with the simulation to break up the shapes a bit more so that looks good i'm still seeing too much of this uh mushroomy shape so again at this point we can make this a bit longer that will work yeah now that's a bit more broken up quite like that let's cache it just wait a few seconds for the cache frames is fine and let's plug in the pyro bake you can see we're getting a cool little explosion happening here let's preview this or was it frame 70 right Maybe we would need more velocities, kicking everything up at the beginning. And then you can also animate. But yeah, that feels quite good in general for a quick explosion. What I usually do once I have this, I would do a retime here. Uh, especially if it's just one explosion, you can then play around with the values quite a lot. So I would put this at one, put this to two. Let this explode and then put it to one here. Just do this just in case. Bam. So it's a bit faster in the beginning and then it slows down. So you don't have to do everything in the sim. Uh, sometimes it's just easier to retime your explosions after the fact. Now let's try another thing. So let's copy the solver. Let's simulate a few frames. And let's go to this guy. And let's reduce the division size a bit and reset the sim. So you can see the simulation 
has changed, but the main shapes are kind of staying in a similar space, right? So that just means that when you are testing things out, you can test them at a lower resolution and you will get similar shapes. But testing like this is just going to make everything a lot faster. Now, they're not going to be exactly the same. I'm just saying they're going to be uh, Axiom, will, Axiom will try to contain the shapes so you can then test on you can test and do iteration super fast and you will get similar results in a lot of cases like you see here you know you can see the silhouette being uh, kind of similar in this case okay so that's it when it comes to the more advanced emitters but let's uh kick things up a bit and let's look at some more examples.